You know, another really sneaky part of uh, the, the Bush-Cheney uh, lie-slash-media manipulation machine was embedding reporters. That, that was a slick trick. Embed your reporters with the soldiers, and you can be guaranteed they're not going to be talking to the local folks and asking their opinion. I was on a uh, debate panel at the Talkers Convention on Friday. After I got the award, uh, Alan Combs and I were on this panel with seven right-wing talk show hosts and Bubba the Love Sponge, and uh, who is kind of right-wing too. And, you know, one of these guys, I, I, think, I think it was David Webb, he, he, he's, he's like, I'm a, I'm a veteran and, you know, I, I, oh, somebody said something about the, the, the president had released five terrorists in exchange for a traitor. And Alan Colm said, you know, the war is going to be over at the end of the year, and those guys would have to be released anyway because there's no charges against them. And then this, and then this guy goes, oh, how do you know, when did we start having wars on schedules? You know, it's, you don't have a war that has a scheduled end. You win a war, you lose a war. At which point I piped up and said, we won the war. We won the war in, in January, February, March, in the spring of 2003. We, run, we, we won that war about two weeks after we started it, in Iraq, just like Afghanistan, when we toppled the government and took over the country. We took control of the country. You know, it's a, it's a Bush won the war in a couple of weeks. He won both wars in a couple of weeks. And then we had an occupation. And at that point, I had five conservatives screaming at me, and so I never got a chance to say anything more. But just to continue with this, occupations always have end dates, or I always should. I mean, you could argue that there are places like, you know, Tibet right now being occupied by China. There really should be an end date on that. Uh, there won't be, in all probability. But, and, and, there, and there's probably no shortage of Native Americans on reservations who are, you know, looking out at the rest of the United States going, uh, when's this occupation of our land going to end? But uh, to, apropos of Iraq and Afghanistan, just like with Vietnam. I mean, you know, Jerry Ford wanted, wanted more money for Vietnam, and Congress said no. And so we pulled all our soldiers out. And remember the iconic shot of the helicopter on the top of the U.S. Embassy, you know, with people desperate to get into it? That actually wasn't when we pulled all our soldiers out. That was like two and a half years later. When, we, when Saigon was falling. I mean, it took a couple of years for the North Vietnamese to take over all of South Vietnam. There was still a South Vietnamese army. There was still a civil war going on between North and South Vietnam. Just like there's, you know, a Shia Sunni, Kurd, Alawite, wild, insane battle going on in the Middle East right now. But there was, there was a point where we said, okay, we're out of here. And then we waited what Henry, Henry Kissinger referred to as a decent interval before we really, really, totally just got out of there altogether. And, and the result of our intervention had been an intervention that we relied into for no good reason. And I'm not sure to this day, I, maybe some of you are scholars of the Vietnam War. I am not. I don't know if Lyndon Johnson knew that the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution was a lie or not. There's little doubt in my mind that George W. Bush wanted to have his war, and he didn't care how he got it. And it may well have been the case with LBJ. I just don't know. And it's something that I should probably look up one of these days. But in any case, we killed at least 2 million Viet Vietnamese. Uh, many of them civilians, probably most of them. We covered their country with dioxin in Agent Orange. They're still, they're still suffering with birth defects and DNA damage generations later as a result of it. Our bombing campaigns in Laos and Cambodia, the illegal ones that Richard Nixon did, uh, toppled those regimes and led to Pol Pot rising to power in Cambodia. Pol Pot, whose, whose idea was reset the calendar to the year zero. And let's start our culture and our nation literally all over again. 
And so he, he literally, and it was like the French Revolution. The French Revolution, they had this idea too. You know, uh, Maximilian Robespierre and his buddies. Uh, change the names of the months, change the names of the days, change the calendar, reset the, ca re reset the year to zero, start anew. No religion, the French Revolution, they banned, re they banned Christianity. No religion, no, no old culture, no history. The history will be Pol Pot was the founding father of the country. And that's why they went across the country and anybody who wore glasses, that being a sign of literacy, they executed. They killed over a million people. Louise and I were in, in uh, that part of the world back in the uh, back when we owned the travel agency this would have been between 83 and 86 and uh, we had an opportunity to take a cruise on one of these sailing ships but they're the modern electronic ones where the sails are computer controlled and all that kind of thing holds about 40 or 50 passengers and it was one of these uh, uh, fam trips you know a, a free trip from the cruise line so that you could go back and sell it to your customers and we were sailing through the Straits of Malacca uh, which I think is between Malaysia and Indonesia. It's in that neighborhood anyway. And the guy, that, a guy who was on the ship with us, who I've kept in touch with over the years, in fact, I quote him in my book, uh, my first book on ADD at some length, um, although I can't remember his name now. But anyhow, he was, a, he was a physician with the Red Cross, and he was Pol Pot's doctor. He was there when Pol Pot died. And... Because the Red Cross doesn't discriminate. They, you know, anybody who's in a crisis, they go to help. And that had been his last assignment. And he was then kind of, he was a Canadian. And then he was kind of retired and he was on this cruise ship, you know, just enjoying his retirement. But it's, it's just amazing the damage that we cause when we invade countries and then occupy them for years. We'll be back with your calls.